Hey everyone, this is Yannick from CodeSpecialist.com and in this video we are going to show you 5 ways to speed up your Python code. Python is an amazing language, but when it comes to computation speed, I won't lie, Python pretty much sucks. There are many other languages like C and Java that tend to perform much better regarding bare computational speed. However, that's not a reason to abandon Python. We gathered 5 tricks for you to speed up your Python programs without any fancy mathematical optimizations. We structured this video from insignificant impact to absolutely mind-blowing, so make sure you stay until the end. Number 5. Variables. Yeah, you heard right. Variables. Even though this trick is pretty insignificant, I don't want to omit it. If you came to Python from another language, you probably want to define variables like this. x equals 1, y equals 2. And if you wanted to swap these values for any reason, you'd probably do it like this. temp equals x, x equals y, and y equals temp. To avoid y to override the value of x before it was assigned to y. But there is a more Pythonic approach to this. Instead of defining the variables in two lines, you could simply write x, y equals 1, 2. That's neat, isn't it? But there's even another trick hiding in this kind of concept. Check out this line of code. x, y equals y, x. What the... This is what I call the swap. And the reason this works is because of the Python interpreter itself. If you take a look at the Python docs, you may find this under expressions in the section evaluation order. The interpreter will always try to read your code from left to right. An exception to this rule is the assignment of variables. The interpreter will first read the right hand side of your assignment and then the left hand side. So what happens here is that we first read y and then we read x. And just after that, we put y into x and x into y. To prove to you that this actually saves time, we ran these functions over 150 million times and measured the average runtime. What you can see here is that we in average saved about 4% of computational time. Number 4. Avoid for loops. Something that is really slow in Python are for loops. So if you have any chance to avoid them, do it. Two concepts you might need here are list comprehensions and the map function. Let's look into the list comprehension first. I'm sure you're all guilty of this. You want to build a simple function that turns strings into uppercase strings. So you write a function that takes in a list of strings and then you simply iterate over each of these strings and call the upper method to uppercase the whole string. And then you simply create the list and depend all the strings you uppercased. But due to the dynamic typing of Python, and the fact that Python is interpreted and not compiled, this will be pretty slow. Keep this code in mind when we now look at the list comprehension version of this. This code does exactly the same thing as the code below. Without being insanely hard to read, this looks much tidier and is even faster. So how would we solve this with a map? Or well, first of all, what is a map? If you know about functional programming, you probably know what a map is. For those who don't know, <laughs> I'm sorry, I just had to get this footage into the video somehow. So what the map function in Python is doing is simply mapping functions and their inputs. So it basically takes two inputs, the function and the list of arguments. Make sure you pass in the function, not the function call, by simply removing the parentheses. Please note that we can't call the upper method like above, as we have no access to the element instances of the list. We could create the lambda method, but it's not part of this video. But we can still pass in the upper method from the string type. Something that can help you here is looking into the type definition of map. Make an iterator that computes the function using arguments from each of the iterables. But what's not written here is that the map function is lazy. What in short terms means that the data is only computed when requested explicitly. So what we have to do now is to add square brackets to our code to tell Python that we want the list type here. And then we use the so-called unpacking operator, this little star here unpack all the values from the map function into the newly created list and thereby asking explicitly for the result. Both of these concepts are nearly equal in speed and it depends on the case which one of these is faster than the other one. For this particular case our map function was about 98% faster than the for loop and about 50% faster than the list comprehension. Number 3. Avoid the plus operator for strings. 
When it comes to the concatenation of strings, there are several options that seem to do the same thing, but there are huge differences in their computational speed. Take a look at this example. We have a list of strings and want to concatenate them, separated only by a space. But the problem with this function is that we have a space in front of the first variable and that it is insanely slow. What we should use instead is the join method. As you may see in the function's definition, join will concatenate all the strings and separate them by the string provided, though this is not always the solution. For instance, take the case where you just want to append two variables in a string. A concept that might come in handy now are formatted strings, also called f-strings. If you put an f in front of your string, it will automatically be a formatted string. Inside this string you can use curly braces to use variables. Measuring this showed that the join method was over 900% faster than the add operator. Number 2. Don't trust anyone. This might sound a bit theatralic first, but what I mean with this is that you shouldn't trust in the things that people say in videos, blog posts or even Stack Overflow. You shouldn't even trust in the things I just said in this video. If you want to make sure your program runs as fast as possible, you should measure each function and expression in your code. Look at this example. We have five functions that basically do all the same. Square A that calculates the power of 2 of the input. Then we have square B that calculates the input times the input. We have the square method from NumPy. We have a square method that is implemented in a multi-thread module of Python. And we have a built-in function power that calculates the input to the power of 2. But again, all these functions differ a lot in their runtime. And what's most interesting here are the first two ones. It does make a difference if you calculate x squared or x times x. As mentioned earlier, Python is interpreted and not compiled, so these operations won't be optimized by default. And this leads us straight to number one. Use a just-in-time compiler. A just-in-time compiler is a kind of middleware. It translates the Python code into machine code, just like a real compiler would do. The major difference between a compiler and a just-in-time compiler is that the code won't be pre-compiled. The code will be compiled when a program is executed. Unfortunately, it is not yet possible without any sacrifice. The most popular just-in-time compiler for Python is Number, but many modules like NumPy or Pandas, which are frequently used to work with data, do currently not work with Number. But for very basic operations and low-level code, using number can make a huge difference. For instance, take this code. It shows a very famous method to estimate pi. By using the JIT decorator, we tell number to just-in-time compile this, resulting into an incredible performance boost of over 2500%. This concludes our video about 5 ways to speed up your Python code. Now it's your turn. Comment below and tell us which of these techniques you're going to apply in your Python code. If you liked this video, please subscribe and make sure to activate notifications so you get notified when we publish new videos. Thanks for watching!